The movie opens in the year 2003, and we see a woman named Sonia and her daughter Claire arriving at their mansion. Claire wants to see her dad Henry, but her mother denies her, citing his busy schedule. Turns out, Henry works for Minos, a company that designs escape rooms. They trap people in those rooms to organize the survival games, while the rich folks bet on winners. Later on, Sonia walks into her husband's office and expresses her wish to end their relationship. This reveals that they are not on good terms. Henry, who is already frustrated by his work, asks her to take a breather and they'll talk in an hour. You can't escape from this room, says Henry. As a result, she goes for a quick swim and then heads to their sauna room. While relaxing there, the door suddenly locks up and the temperature starts to rise every few seconds, freaking her out. Moments later, some riddles appear on the steamed door, which makes her realize that her husband is playing a death game with her. Although filled with panic, Sonia frantically tries to find her way out of the room. She eventually solves the riddle and finds a magnet hidden under one of the lava rocks. She uses it to slide open the metal bars that are locking the door. Sonia manages to slide two of them, but her lungs give out while proceeding with the last one, causing her to die inside the sauna. The scene cuts to the present day, and we are introduced to Zoe Davis and Ben Miller, who are the former survivors of an escape room orchestrated by the Minos Corporation. Now, they plan to fly to New York in order to expose this shadowy organization. On the other hand, we see Claire, who has now grown up and works for Minos. However, this seems to be against her will, because she's locked inside a glass room and is forced to make escape rooms for her father. This guy is like the exhibit of escape rooms. It appears that Henry is planning to kill the former survivors. Claire argues against her father, saying that she understands Zoe because they both know what it's like to lose their mothers. However, Dad remains resolute in his decision. Elsewhere, as Ben and Zoe prepare to board a flight, the latter experiences PTSD from when her mom died in a plane crash a few years ago. This makes her so uncomfortable that she refuses to get on the flight at the last moment. Following this, they rent a car and opt to drive there instead. After hours of driving, the two pull over at a hotel to spend a night there. At midnight, Ben has a nightmare, in which he experiences the room shaking and the ceiling slowly starting to come down. As the situation gets intense, he suddenly snaps out of it with cold sweats. He also has a weird boner for some reason. The duo then continues their journey and eventually reaches the supposed Minos facility within an alley. Although there aren't any signs of the headquarters, Zoe urges Ben to look around the place. During this, they are approached by a local thug who runs away after snatching Zoe's necklace, a sentimental item from her mother. They chase the thug down the streets and into a subway station, leading them to a train car. However, the thug escapes, leaving them stuck inside. With all hope seemingly lost, the two plan to get off at the next station and return to the building. Shortly after, Ben and Zoe sense something strange about the train car, especially the weird noises. As a result, they check the conductor station and find nobody inside. Soon enough, their train car detaches from the rest and is redirected to a remote station with no button to stop it. Alongside Zoe and Ben, there are four other passengers, Rachel, Brianna, Nathan, and Theo, who also happen to be former survivors of the escape room. The train stops at a dead end, throwing them all over the car. As they gather themselves, the train becomes electrified, which makes them realize that they are once again in Minos's deadly game. Theo wants to get home for his wife's birthday, so he presses a button in the train in hopes of summoning assistance. However, he only gets a pre-recorded message. Hi, mystery recapped here, it says. In today's movie, you're all fucked. Realizing that they must play the game to survive, the group splits up to find clues. Nathan discovers a hidden bag containing a towel and a metal handle, while Brianna finds a locked trap door. Soon after, they learn that they must collect alphabetic tokens for the conductor's slot machine to escape. They also notice a sign that says all false advertising must be pulled. In an attempt to figure out its meaning, they find several advertisements with some alphabet missing in it. At this point, Zoe realizes that there are 26 handles similar to the 26 letters in the alphabet. Following this, they pull out the corresponding handles to each letter that's missing, which actually works. They then begin recovering several coins from the handles. As the electrification intensifies, Theo becomes its first victim because he didn't know the alphabet, resulting in his tragic demise. With the rest of their clues getting singed, Zoe looks at the letters they collected and spells out the words, Welcome back. 
She then helps the group get the last few tokens and insert it in the slot, ultimately opening the trap door. Fortunately, they all quickly jump down as the train car gets engulfed by electric current. After this, they find themselves in an elevator that leads them further underground. Rachel rushes to open the door for the next room, but the others suggest that they act calmly. They then introduce themselves and also share their past histories. Nathan discloses that his escape room group comprised of all priests like him. Brianna's were all influencers. How did they figure anything out? And Rachel's group consisted of people who can't feel physical pain. What? After a brief conversation, the group makes their way to a room that turns out to be a bank. While wandering around, Brianna accidentally steps on a tile that triggers a laser system, trapping her in place. Fortunately, there's Rachel and Nathan who help her off the tile. They then notice a closing vault on the other side of the room, seemingly their way out. However, they need to get the correct pattern through the tiles to get there. With only 10 minutes of time remaining, the group begins searching for clues. They soon find a key inside a lollipop, which they then then try using in the safety deposit boxes. Brianna tries licking the lollipop, but she doesn't have an ear-shaped microphone or an audience, so it's ineffective. As they fail miserably, Zoe spots a safety box which is labeled as Sonia instead of numbers. Upon opening it, she discovers some blank bills with a four-digit code hidden in it. Nathan enters this code into an ATM, causing four wall clocks to display different times. He then corresponds the clock times with the tiles and proceeds to test the route, while also leaving a trail of lollipops for the group to follow. At one point, he gets lost and steps on the wrong tile, triggering the laser and knocking him down to the ground. Brianna and Rachel hurriedly lift him off the tile, deactivating the lasers. With only one minute left, Zoe finds a chart with the remaining pattern of the tiles and guides the group towards the exit, with Ben carrying Nathan. In the last few seconds, Zoe makes a run and barely manages to enter the vault. Once inside, the group finds themselves in a cave, which soon starts to collapse. As a result, they rush towards the exit and end up in a beach-like room. Wasting no time, they begin looking for the clues, eventually discovering a metal detector. Using it, they locate a reactive spot and start digging. They soon unearth an anchor, but before they can take it out, the beach is revealed to be covered with quicksand that begins to suck Rachel in. How did Henry afford all this shit? Seeing this, Nathan decides to save her, so he ties a rope around himself and dives into the sand to lift her up. The group manages to pull Rachel out, but the rope snaps before they can rescue Nathan, who is then swallowed up by the sand. Despite the tragic loss, there's no time for mourning, so they grab the anchor and use it as a key to access a beach hut. Inside, they come across a locked refrigerator, which they believe to be an exit. For Indiana Jones, maybe. While searching for a key to it, Zoe turns on a switch, changing the daytime to night and activating the lighthouse outside. She then heads to its top to find further clues, while Ben locates the refrigerator's key inside a mannequin. He quickly hands it over to the women, who then open the refrigerator's door finding the way out. Meanwhile, Zoe finds an alternate route out by prying open one of the room's decors. She believes that this will allow them to escape the entire game. As the beach starts sinking, the group gets into an argument as to which route to take. In the end, Rachel and Ben head for the lighthouse, while Brianna takes the main exit. Rachel climbs to the top, but Ben can't make it as the ladder closes, causing him to fall into the quicksand. Zoe is left in shock, but Rachel convinces her to keep moving before it gets too too late. They're just men. It doesn't matter if they die. Following this, the two make it to a manhole. Zoe, who is overwhelmed by her friend's death, starts blaming herself. Rachel tries to console her, saying that it's Minos' fault, not hers. She also reminds her that they need to stop Minos if they want to be free forever. This convinces Zoe to keep moving, and the two navigate through the manhole. Not long after, they find a ladder, enabling them to emerge into the city streets. Although overjoyed at first, their happiness is cut short when they encounter a panicking Brianna looking for the clue. This makes them realize that they are still in the game. Since Brianna has been there for a little while, she informs them that it rains acid every time the timer gets to zero and that they need a key to a rolling shutter. They somehow manage to locate the key, but it's not enough because there's another set of locked doors. The timer runs out, but quickly, a sunshade pops out in the nick of time to protect them. Just then, they hear a phone 
booth ringing, but they can't get inside due to another lock. At the same time, they hear a news broadcast playing on a TV in the store, which gives them a clue. They need to collect the acid water to melt down the lock. The trio acts accordingly and manages to unlock the phone booth, but they hear nothing. With not enough clues to progress, Zoe steps off the booth in search of the next puzzle piece, but the timer runs out on her. Thankfully, Rachel throws her an umbrella, which everyone knows is impervious to acid. While the two of them hide in the phone booth, amidst the acid rain, Zoe notices an ad mentioning three rings, so she instructs them to answer the phone on the third ring. They follow her advice, and the taxi door opens, providing Zoe with shelter from the acid. As the rain stops, Brianna and Rachel also run to the cab, but its door closes. To their bad luck, the phone booth also shuts, leaving them without any shelter. They desperately try to find a way in, but to no avail. As the timer runs out, Rachel accepts her fate and consoles Brianna, too. They hold each other as the acid rain melts them down. Brianna thinks that if she were live right now, she'd be going viral. On the other hand, Zoe is transported right outside Claire's glass room. As Claire pleads for her help in escaping, Zoe notices the blueprints of the escape room, making her realize that she's the one who designed them. Infuriated, she yells at her, accusing her of being a murderer. However, Claire reasons that she was forced to do it by her dad. In order to gain her trust, she shows her footage of Ben, still alive, also revealing that she built a secret extractor tank under the quicksand to rescue his ass. But unfortunately, the guards track him down and throw him into a final room, the sauna. Upon witnessing this, Zoe asks Claire to do something, to which the latter asserts that she has to get her out of the room first. For that, they must solve another puzzle. Claire also tells her that they only have two chances left before the room's oxygen gets cut out. Upon learning of all of this, Zoe helps her in decoding the puzzle and eventually unlocks the door. But before they can run away, Henry shows up and holds them at gunpoint. The situation is tense, and it appears that the girls are going to be killed. But right then, Claire's companion shoots Henry on his shoulder, enabling her to lock him inside the glass room. Riddle me that, b bitch says Claire. The girls then head towards the control room to override the sauna room and save Ben from getting burned. After doing so, Claire hands Zoe her father's car, revealing that her coordinates to the Minos' headquarters were correct. She also shares her decision to call the police once Zoe reaches a safe distance. By the time Zoe arrives at the headquarters, the police and paramedics are already there. She goes searching for Ben and finds him being taken into an ambulance. She tells him that the game is finally over and everything is going to be fine. Unless, of course, this is all just another escape room. Meanwhile, Claire goes back to talk to her father. Through their conversation, we learn that Claire was the one to build the sauna room and kill her own mother, solely to impress her father. However, she expresses her disappointment on how he took all the credit for it. In the end, she enters the wrong codes and cuts off the oxygen supply from the glass room. Subscribe for more videos like this turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.